What's really going down? What could happen? And, and I don't like to entertain this too much because, you know, I'm just a, a simple girl. I'm not a conspiracy theorist of any sort. But uh, I didn't like what I saw in the New York Times today. This is a fancy schmancy private school called Ethical Culture Fieldston. It's in New York City. You pay some $65,000 for the privilege of going to this school where they are so left and so liberal that they actually, actually want to close down school in the event that uh, the wrong person wins, or rather, maybe not close down, but at least, at least offer their children the mental health day that they're so going to need because, you know, everybody's going to be coming apart at the seams. So apparently Jerry Seinfeld's kids went to this school ethical culture feels, and he's not too happy about it. So he's quoted, this is a story here in the Daily Mail, but it was also in the New York Times. He said, apparently, this is why he took his kids out. I quote, this is why the kids hated it. What kind of lives have these people led that makes them think this is the right way to handle young people, to encourage them to buckle? This is the lesson they are providing for ungodly sums of money. So maybe he doesn't like Trump. Maybe he's thinking, you know what? If the other side wins, the answer is not to take your ball and go home. Maybe the the answer is to say, hey, you know what? I get to face reality because we are one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all, to quote the Pledge of the Legions, which I guarantee you they don't say at Ethical Culture in New York City at $65,000 a year. I bet you those kids don't even know it. So it has me asking, what are they really up to? Do you get the day off work? You get the day off school? We're going to enter some kind of massive, massive crisis because it's not acceptable that Donald Trump wins? And if that's the case, what are they actually really planning? I mean, I'm a little alarmed considering some of the sound that I played you most recently of Kamala Harris saying that that they'll deal with November when November comes. This was a couple of weeks ago. Listen. You know, because some people find it humorous what he says and, and think it's just silly, but understand how brutally serious it is. Well, the courts will take care of that. We'll take care of November. Yes. <laughs> we'll take care of November. But... It is brutally serious. Because I mean, that, that's why I don't understand. What is this, we'll take care of November, the courts will take care of that? And this is sort of worst case scenario, right? What if the blue wall is a little more challenging than Democrats anticipated? What if it looks like maybe Donald Trump might win? Well, then what happens? Do they hold out? Do they say, okay, we're not going to release the results of Pennsylvania or Michigan? We're going to wait? What exactly happens? So I, I heard from a really good source, highly connected actually to the Trump campaign, that one of the concerns is they might actually put Kamala Harris in as president. In other words, Joe Biden will step down, so then she would become the first female president of the United States. And then the next fear is, what could she do with executive orders? Now, don't forget how desperately they want to change the courts. How desperately they think they need to change the courts. I mean, Biden has said this over and over again. He was really angry. Remember, he couldn't get all that student loan forgiveness through because the court was in the way? The Supreme Court of the United States blocked me, but they didn't stop me. Mm, They didn't stop you. This is very exciting for us. (laughs) Exciting for me. <laughs> you said today, um, and I, I know that you have a lot of power, but I can't imagine you manu- manufactured the breaking news about the court. You said this court is not normal. What did you mean? What I meant by that is it's done more to unravel basic rights and basic decisions than any court in re- re- recent history. And uh, that's what I meant by not normal. It, it's, it's gone out of its way to, I mean, for example, take a look at, overruling Roe v. Wade. Take a look at what the decision today. Take a look at how it's uh, 
how it's ruled on a number of issues that are have been precedent for 50, 60 years sometimes. And that's what I meant by not normal. Can I so the Supreme Court is the problem. According to Joe Biden, it is not normal. So what do you do about something like that? Kamala was asked. With the Supreme Court being plagued with issues, would you be in favor of expanding the court to say 12 so each justice has only one circuit court other than chief justice to assist in making judgments more balanced? Well, to your point, I, th there is no question that the American people increasingly are losing confidence in the Supreme Court. And in large part because of the behavior of certain members of that court and because of certain rulings, including the Dobbs decision and taking away a precedent that had been in place for 50 years, protecting a woman's right to make decisions about her own body. So I do believe that there should be some kind of reform of the court and we can study what that actually looks like. But I do believe. But again, let's just. OK, while you, raise you heard her. OK, I, I'm playing you the sound because you got to hear it. You got to remember exactly what Kamala Harris said. She does believe that we need some kind of, quote, reform of the court. Reform of the court. What exactly would she like to do with her reform of the court other than to get her justices on there that are going to interpret things through a political lens and they're going to blame the other side and say, oh, well, you know, it's because of those Trump cronies there on the court.